One of the great things about Power Query is its ability to clean and reshape data from a non-tabular format into a tabular format that is used to drive data models. The data pattern we want to work on today is arguably one of the most important data formats for two specific reasons. Number one, it is a common data shape that you will see in the real world. And secondly, the technique we're going to use is used in other transformations as well. Let's call this pattern as single column stack data. And the goal of the technique is to take a single column stack data and pivot it into a nice tabular format as shown here. Before we actually learn the technique, let us first take a careful look at the key characteristics of this source data set. While this is based on a download of sales transactions of an electronic store, this pattern shows up in many different data sets. Let's look at the sample data set closely. So if we notice, except the first row, which appears to be a header, the data follows a very consistent pattern. It appears to be order ID, item, order date and time, purchase address, and then a blank row. And after that, the same pattern is repeated for the second record, the third, and so on. So if we ignore the header, this is a consistent block of stat records where each record is five rows long. And this five row pattern repeats throughout the entire data file. The consistent repeating pattern is the key that we need in order to leverage the technique we are about to learn in this video. The pattern does not need to be four rows every time, but it must be consistent from record to record. If there is even one record in the data set which contains a different number of rows, this technique will not work. With that part covered, let's launch Power BI and learn the actual technique to reshape this single column stack data into tabular form. First things first, let's connect to our data source. So we have our data source in the form of a text file, which is on sitting on my desktop. To get that, click on get data in the home ribbon and scroll down to text CSV because that's the format our data is in. And this is the stack data.txt file. And if you want to follow along, I have included a link to this file in the description of this video. So you can download and follow along with this video and or you can practice this later on. Just watch this video once and then practice it without looking at the video. So let's connect, click open. So here we have our pop-up where it shows a summary of our data. We can see all the data is in one column and now we need to transform it. So we're going to click on transform data and this launches Power Query and here we have the query called stack data as for the name of the text file, all the data in column one, but we also have column two, column three, like blank columns. And also if we look at the applied steps, the Power Query has applied a step of change data type. We don't need that. So I'm just going to delete that. So just click on the cross, delete it. Now, the first things we want to do is we want to get rid of these extra columns. So select the column which has the data, right click on it, and say remove other columns. This is best way to do it because we know we want to keep the first column and if there are two or maybe another file comes in, there might be three blank columns or one blank column, then that won't impact your transformation. So basically keep the column that has the data and remove all the remaining columns. Okay, now next thing, we have transactions here. Let's promote this into the header for this column. So to do that, go to home ribbon and under transform here, click use first row as headers. And again, transformation happened. Keep an eye on the applied steps all the time. And if you see here, headers being promoted and also again, change type happened. We don't want to do that because we don't have our data in separate columns yet. So we don't want to apply change data type. So this is unnecessary. So we're just going to remove that. This green and black uh, sort of gray line, basically it shows there is empties, there are empty cells, there's blank data in there. So there's nine empty cells, 18% blank. 
and 40 valenced cells. So basically that gray is showing that there is missing data somewhere and we know that we have blank rows in here. So nothing to worry about. Okay, now this is where the actual technique starts. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add a column. So go to add column ribbon. So we're going to add an index column starting from zero. So this adds a new column, index column starting from zero. Okay, next we're going to add another column. So stay on add column ribbon, go to standard and click on divide integer. Okay, a pop-up box comes up here. Now we need to provide a value here. This value should be the index number showing against the first row of the second record. Let me just remove this for a second. So the index value for the first row of the second record. So in this case, the second record begins at here six, but we have to look at the index value. So index value is five for the first row of this second record. That's what we need. So we go standard and divide integer and we're going to add here five. Click OK. And we have the integer division. So you should have five zeros, then five ones, and then five two, so on. So the pattern repeats. Next, we go back to the index column. So select the index column, go to transform. Now make sure don't stay on add column. You have to go to transform on the ribbon, transform ribbon, not the add column ribbon. So we're going to change the values in this index column in place. So again, transform, go to this uh, standard calculations and click on modulo. So modulo operator, basically what it does is when you divide a number by another number, it returns the remainder part. So again, what do we want to divide by? We want to divide by the same number like the index number or index value for the first row of the second record, which is five in this case. So you click enter five, click OK. And the index column should have this pattern now. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. So each record has this pattern of index of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Okay. So that's the, I think the challenging part done. Understanding that is the only challenging part. Rest all is very easy. Now what we want to do is we want to keep the index column selected and go to uh, transform ribbon and click pivot column. Now this dialog box, pay attention to this. Values column, we have to tell which column contains the values. In this case, the transactions column contains the values. So that's fine. Then open this advanced section and it applies in aggregation. Remember, we want to select the option of don't aggregate. We don't want to apply any aggregation when we are doing this pivoting at the moment, no calculations. This is just purely transforming, changing the shape from this one column to multiple columns. So we are just pivoting it. So select the values column. In this case, it's the transactions column and then change under advanced options, change the aggregation to don't aggregate and click OK. And there we have it. Look, we have our data in the sort of four separate columns. Most of the work's now done. What remains is clean up and then obviously apply the right uh, column headers and data types. So this integer division column, we don't need. So let's remove that. And this column with blank cells, we don't need uh, because we had one blank row, uh, you remember for each record. So this is coming from that those blank rows. So we don't need this, so let's remove that. Okay, and if you see here in the applied steps, I removed first the index column and then this column and the it's there's just one step. So basically if you do similar steps, then it's combined into one particular step. And if you see here in the formula bar, it's showing you we removed the integer division and the quote column basically. So that's being recorded there. Now we have four columns, let's first give the columns meaningful names. So this is order ID. This is the item. And if I can spell it correctly, this is the order date. And this next one is the um, purchase address. 
and there we have all the columns. Now we need to change the apply the right data types. So the order ID is whole number. So just click on the icon next to the column name. So ABC where it says ABC and drop down opens, change it to whole number. And as we do that, you see numbers always align to the right side of the cell. So let's change from text to number now. The item is text column, which is fine. The order date is date time column. Now this is a tricky one. So it says here 0-1-22-19 and basically it's month first, then day and then the year. Now my Power BI and my Windows is set up to UK date and time and this appears to be the US date and time. So if I just select and apply date time, you see we get errors because it's not able to convert that 22 into a valid month. So we don't want this so we're going to uncheck this and because of that the other transformations have also gone so we're just going to change this again to whole number keep the item as um, text and this one how we change it to the date time format is using locale so this allows you to override your uh, local settings on your machine so in this case we want it to be date time format but not the united kingdom format but the us format so we need to go in the drop down select english united states click ok and the magic happens and now after applying importing it basically applying that format it's showing the date in the format in my local machine format so month first and then sorry day first then month and then the year okay and the next column is the one which contains the address so there we have it we got our data nicely formatted in the tabular form applied the right date our types and now we're ready to import it into Power BI data model. So click close and apply. Changes will apply. It's loading data from the stack data txt file. And remember, you know, we already know, I guess we talked about this in other videos, that once we click the close and apply, that's when all the transformations get applied to the entire data set. Till then we were working with a subset of the data set depending on the size again. But once we do the close and apply, that's when all the transformations are applied to the whole data set, and then it gets imported into Power BI data model. So we can look at the data if we want. We can go to the data tab, and here we have it. This is a really small data set just because we wanted to focus on the technique. So that's how we convert a vertically stacked column data set, so which is all vertically stacked data in one column into nicely formatted tabular data set. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed and uh, liked this technique. Go practice it. That's the best way to learn and master any of these techniques. So download the data from the video description and practice yourself without watching or you know try to remember these things and applying yourself. And also if you have any questions regarding the contents of this video, what we covered, do leave a comment and I'll come back to you. And if you like this video or want to see more content like this, then do subscribe to this channel, give us a thumbs up and hit the bell icon so you get notified for any new videos. In the meantime, keep on learning. See you next time.